Good afternoon, everyone. Great to see you all. Some familiar, I was about to say old familiar faces, but I cut out the old. So some familiar faces week in, week out, which is great to see, and some new faces as well. So thank you very much for joining us. We had a, a bumper turnout last week for the live webinar and especially for the, uh, the viewings after on the website. So it's great to see that hopefully you're getting something out of these webinars, which is helping you navigate our way through the, um, the environment that we all find ourselves in. To really make sure that we are hitting the spot, uh, last week in, in my Friday email, we issued a, a short survey and I just want to thank you, we had a great response. So thank you very, very much indeed for everybody who contributed to that. It only takes, only took a couple of minutes. Um, I think it closed last night. So we'll collate and have a look at all those responses in the next couple of days. And that's just really to make sure that we're providing the timing and the content uh, that is helping you. That's what this is about. But at any time, if you didn't have a chance to do the survey, that's fine. Please just email us at clubsupport at gymnastics.org.au with any suggestions, ideas or feedback alongside, of course, as I know you're all doing, contacting your state and territory associations for any local issues. Right, we have multiple guests today, so it's going to be a busy half hour, as they always are, and another big topic. And it's really carrying on from last week's webinar where Dr. Cathy spoke about personal hygiene. So today our topic is about club and equipment hygiene. And we've certainly had a lot of questions about that. And with most states and clubs now starting to turn their minds to reopening, this is key. This is a key and integral element in how we can look to reboot our sport and our clubs. Ensuring that when we all do reopen, whenever that might be, that we can all provide a safe, and hygienic environment to mitigate whatever risks we can and to reduce as much as we can the risk of transmission or contamination through either surface or personal means. The AIS framework for rebooting sport that, as we know, was released a couple of weeks ago, which provides the national principles for reopening venues, states very clearly for sport in level B the requirements to disinfect high touch services as per the manufacturer's guidelines. The national principles released alongside the AIS framework released by the National Cabinet also regularly stresses the need for regular hygiene and the importance of surface and equipment hygiene. So I want to reiterate firstly what, what Dr. David Hughes, who's the medical director at the AIS and who was basically the author of the AIS framework, what he keeps reiterating is that we all must proceed cautiously and methodically. And I know I bang on about those two words, but I can't stress them enough. Cautiously and methodically. As exciting as it is that we are all now thinking about reopening, we cannot be too careful. And as Dr. Cathy said last week, and she also continually reiterates in all our communications with her, which is pretty much every day, the primary responsibility and I think this is, it. this is important for you guys to remember. The primary responsibility is on the individual for personal hygiene. So education by you to your members, to anyone coming into your gym is key. Because yes, you can control what happens within your four walls, but the risk of what one of your members, athletes, parents bring into the gym is a greater risk. And their behaviours of personal hygiene, sounds terrible to say that, but their behaviours outside the gym is a bigger risk to you, potentially, than what you can control within your four walls. So education of everyone coming into your venue, I think, is integral to our success of reopening. There's a lot of information out there about cleaning and hygiene. Some of it is very useful and some of it is downright confusing. And as I'm sure you're all more aware than us, it's very difficult to get any specific information about the cleaning of gymnastics apparatus, which, as you all know, is very specialised. Our equipment partner, Spieth, in Germany, along with, uh, with Pascal from AMCO, is still in the process of producing a, a scientifically and medically based manual guidelines about the cleaning of gymnastics apparatus. That's gonna take time and it's gonna take time to get it right. So at this point in time, what we're really largely left with is a common sense approach. And it sits with you guys, it sits at club level, it sits with your venues 
with obviously advice from your state and territory association and whatever advice that we can bring, but guided by the AIS framework, guided by the national principles, and of course, any local jurisdiction requirements or regulations that you might have to follow. But at the end of the day, it's a common sense approach. It's a cautious and methodical approach. And it's an approach that errs on the side of caution. So to try and assist you to make some of those decisions that you are going to be in a position to have to make, we've gathered together some, what we've tried to make basic, no nonsense advice and guidelines that are very clear for you. Something that GA has been completely focused on throughout all this period with everything that we put out there is providing information only from credible sources and credible evidence. Because there's a lot of people saying this, this, this. In every decision, or fact sheet or whatever it is that we've done, it's been relied on known facts and credible evidence. So in preparing the fact sheet that we put out last Friday on club surface and equipment cleaning, GA sourced information from both Safe Work Australia and from also experts in gymnastics equipment supply and maintenance. The fact sheet, I think, for those of you that have read it, read it covered pretty much every possible thing that you could ever clean in your entire life um, and in your venues to clean. So that was a very comprehensive document that we will be updating um, and I'll talk to Brad about that in a second. So to talk to us today, we have a few guests. So I'll introduce them quickly now and then um, have a Q&A with them one-on-one. -on -one. I dare say we'll get a lot of questions today. I'm not sure we're going to get an opportunity to answer them live today as we tried to do last week. But as always, we'll take them on board. We'll produce an FAQ document that we can put out in the next day or so, answering all those common questions. So joining us today, we have uh, Bradley Lowe, General Manager of Member Services at GA. During this period, Brad is primarily responsible for club support and reactivation. And he's done a magnificent job in collating all the information out there to put into this cleaning fact sheet. So he'll speak to the general cleaning and hygiene requirements uh, as recommendations released by Safe Work Australia. We also have Russell Smart, who'll be known to many of you. Rusty is the owner of RNL Sports Services. Uh, Rusty will share some of his insights into how to maintain gymnastics equipment and apparatus in this environment. Uh, Jade's also joining us, which is great. Jade Martin, the Executive Director of Northern Territory. Uh, Northern Territory was the first of the states and territories to lift restrictions, and Jade's had three or four clubs that have been open now for a week. So it'd be really interesting to hear from Jade. I know she's spoken to her clubs uh, just this morning to hear what challenges, if any, they've faced in respect of cleaning and hygiene in the first week of reopening. And last but certainly not least, uh, Brenton Teacher is joining us. Brenton's the General Manager at the Northern Districts Gymnastics Club in WA. And Brenton will share um, some insights into how his club is preparing for reopening in respect of club and equipment hygiene. So thank you to all our guests. We'll start off with Brad. I don't know where you are on the screen, but I'm sure you'll pop up when you talk. Um, Brad, firstly, just tell us about the briefly the, the, the safe work guidelines and why did GA choose to adopt those guidelines in, in our fact sheet? Uh, yeah, certainly, Kitty. Um, when we were, were putting together the, the fact sheet, um, as you mentioned, GA's always had a philosophy around um, two things. One, ensuring that we provide information based on credible sources. Uh, but two, also information that um, was practical that clubs could actually utilise um, very easily. Um, so with Safe Work Australia, obviously being the, the government statutory body, um, they have created a whole range of really useful information uh, about how to, to manage uh, through this particular COVID-19 phase. Uh, and the, the guidelines that they put out were really practical um, and they provided tips and um, guidance on how to clean um, in a routine way, but also um, what needed to be done if there was a suspected or actual um, COVID-19 outbreak as well. Uh, the information in there went through um, by surface, um, but also by item as well. Um, and as you mentioned, it, it really focused on almost everything that you could possibly think of um, in cleaning. Um, the fact sheet that um, Safe Work put out also looked at the difference between um, cleaning and disinfecting uh, and the importance of that routine cleaning uh, that needs to occur in workplaces 
uh, and then obviously the disinfecting practices should there be a suspected or confirmed COVID outbreak. So I don't know how many of you have actually, um, thanks Brad, have, have actually um, accessed that. I think it was put up on, on Friday night, so I really encourage you to have a look at, um, to have a look at that fact sheet. Brad, I, I suppose what was your top takeout for, you know, for clubs online today? What, what do you think the top takeout, or what one or two from those guidelines would be for clubs? Yeah, the, the big one for me was just the, um, the importance of just routine cleaning. Um, I think we, we think that everything needs to be about disinfecting and, and what we need to do to disinfect. Um, routine cleaning um, is what Safe Work Australia are um, recommending. Um, and obviously high touch surfaces to be done regularly, um, but low touch surfaces to be done on a, on a daily basis. Um, so that was the, the number one takeout for me. Um, and then the, the second takeout was really the, the importance of what needs to be done in terms of deep cleaning and disinfecting. Uh, should there be a suspected or confirmed COVID-19 breakout? And um, that probably for me was a real eye opener in terms of what clubs would be required to do um, should there be a, a suspected or confirmed breakout. Um, and it's, it really is, you know, to, to speak uh, bluntly, it's, it's a world of pain um, that, that, that what we would need to do um, to get our clubs back to the point where we would be able to reopen a game um, if there was a suspected or confirmed COVID-19 thing. And that's something, Brad, that, that I know we've discussed that I think potentially a great topic for, for a webinar in the next couple of weeks. I think we'll focus on this health and safety theme. Not that we want it to happen and if we're all careful, but you know, there's only so much mitigation we could do. Um, and with so many clubs and reopening, we need to be prepared and you all need to be prepared in case something does happen. And so we're looking to provide some guidelines and assistance for that and I think could be a a good topic for a future webinar as well. Um, interested to hear if, if people would think that would be valuable or not. Brad, just finally, there's a, there's a great table in there with, as you said, the cleaning everything possible under the sun um, in there. Um, in respect of the gymnastics apparatus as such, so specific equipment, uh, mm -hmm. we've had some late, latest information just even this morning that we can add in to that. Can you talk yeah, about absolutely. The, the cleaning fact sheet will uh, be, be updated quite regularly. So we are going to ensure that it's version controlled um, and we will um, let you know whenever we do update that fact sheet. But as you said, there is new information coming to light um, every day and we want to ensure that we always have the most up-to-date information out there for you. Um, so yes, yeah, so um, we did receive some, some new information, some new guidelines only this morning. Uh, so we will be updating the fact sheet um, over the next day or so um, and getting that back up on our website again as a new version. Okay, fantastic. Thank you, Brad, and thank you again. I know it's been um, a lot of work pulling all this information and sort of sifting through all the information that is out there and trying to synthesise something that's, that's of most relevance and in a, in a user-friendly means, which is always not often the case, into this. So thank you for all the work that you've been doing um, for that. Rusty, I think you're online somewhere. Um, pop up. Where are you? I'm here. How are you, Kitty? You're here. Good. Now, I can't see you on this page, but I'm sure you... Oh, there you are, right in the middle. Well done. Hello. Um, Rusty, you obviously do a lot of work with equipment maintenance and, um, you know, replacement and cleaning in, in your daily life. I know you've been talking to us a lot in, uh, in the last week or so about this very important topic. What would your five... Five top tips, three, five top tips B to get gymnastics apparatus hygienically cleaned prior to reopening. So what 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 could be done prior to opening first? No, this is certainly um, certainly a challenging area and a challenging time. And um, a lot of my information I've had to talk to the medical people, to Dr. Kathy, um, so that we're coming from a more scientific area. Um, so the the areas that we need to look at or the products that we can look at. Um, any product that has uh, quite an area ammonium compounds in it is one that would do a total clean of a gym, but it is expensive and it is not necessary. Going back to what Brad said, routine cleaning is the key to this. So this product or products with this compound in a, a sorry, QAC would be something that you would use if you had a corona virus um, uh, outbreak in your gym or a person with it, um, but unless you wanted to go down this path to have a complete sanitised gym before you opened up, um, it can be 
incredibly expensive. It is not necessary at this stage, but it is a product you could use if we had to go down that path uh, if a COVID-19 case arose. Mm -hmm. So um, clubs should basically just you do their normal routine cleaning, but do sanitizing of all of the hard surfaces. So almost every surface but the bean top um, and the, um, the pommel horse, the laminated uneven bars and bolt tops. But if you had to clean those or you felt like you really needed to clean those, no product with bleach. Okay? So your Pina cleans, your dead old are the only products or products like that would be one suitable if you needed to sanitize the soft furnishing parts of your gymnastics apparatus. Always remember to wash first before you do any disinfecting or sanitizing to the apparatus. Okay? A surface that's not clean, the sanitizer will cling to the dirt and will not be effective on that. So that includes, for example, making sure you sanitize uprights and all of those. They've got to be clean first. Okay? So disinfecting was not the first, um, first avenue. Clean, then disinfect. Okay? Uh, again, I'll say it again, for balance beam tops, pommel horse tops, bolt tops, and the laminated bars, uneven bars, parallel bars alike, do not use any cleaner that has bleach in it. Normal cleaning is okay if you need to clean them at all. Okay? Um, all products, no matter what they are, could have and may have a damaging effect to your uh, your soft burnishing part of your equipment. Not concerned about the metal work, the uprights, they should be disinfected and wiped down as regularly as required. Okay. Also, you need to remove all matting and all soft shapes that have any tears in the cover because these cannot be properly sanitized and these should not be used for this period of time and all repaired. Bone pits are a very are an area of great concern. A tarp should be taped, put over the foam and tucked around the foam down the sides of the pit. Then you can place a mat on top of the pit and that's how pits should be used. There should be no one going into open foam pits. They should be in a, in a, um, a position where they can easily be cleaned. So mats on top of the tarp that is already covering the foam in the pit. If that's not possible, don't use your phone pits. And carpet strips. Carpet strips, your sprung floors, they can be steam cleaned if you want to give it, a, if you want it sanitized, but you do not want to be doing this regularly. A steam clean of an artistic floor is something you would do annually. Um, you might want to do one before you open up your gym, particularly if you're uh, due to have a clean of the floor. But this is not something you want to then regularly keep doing. The heat will damage the glue that glues the carpet to the foam over a period of time. And the long-term effects of that will not be um, uh, financially beneficial to your club at all. Okay? So we just go back to what Brad had said. Regular cleaning is all you need to do, but sanitize any high uh, areas that are being used often. Okay, uprights that people put their hands on and so on. So that would be my five areas, Kitty, of, um, of getting the gym prepared. That's fantastic, Russell. And they're just sort of, as I said, basic common sense, but, but scientifically backed, you know, evidence backed facts. We'll obviously include that. We'll update them. I think I've been saying fact sheets has been a question. Yes, they are the, um, the club and equipment cleaning guidelines is the same thing. So we'll update with those fantastic tips from Rusty. Just, just one more, Rusty. The actual, um, I suppose, routine of cleaning. How best between classes can people get in, get out? What's the best way to do that to manage time and, and effort once a club is, re is reopened? Look, the, the, um, what needs to be done here is sanitising of uh, prior to coming into the gym or entering into the gym is going to be critical so that um, so that when they come to an apparatus, they're already sanitized, the hands are done, but then repeat sanitizing at each rotation. 
So when you go to bars, sanitize the hands again, move on to the next apparatus, sanitize again, and do that regularly throughout the training session. Um, also making sure that between classes, that high, so areas like uh, spotting platforms where somebody is climbing up, particularly if they're grabbing hold of the upright of an apparatus to climb up a set of stairs or a ladder to get onto an apparatus, those areas should be sanitized, wiped down each time. And um, just going back one at it, when you are cleaning a product, spraying is not enough. It has to be sprayed and wiped. It has to be a mechanical clean. So any sanitizing you do to any of the surfaces can't be just a spray on, a clean 20, and then walk away. It actually needs to be if it's going to be sprayed on, it then needs to be wiped across the surface. Okay, any spray you use is about 60% effective in coverage. Okay, the wipe will, will uh, lift that coverage quite dramatically. A couple of other things that uh, clubs are doing um, and uh, are recommended is making sure that gym or gymnasts bringing their own chalk or having their own chalk. Now, Dr. Cathy doesn't believe that this is as critical uh, because chalk itself uh, takes away moisture and the virus itself relies on moisture to survive. But for the use of, for touching of chalk bowls and so on, having their own chalk would eliminate them sharing um, the same use of a bowl. She certainly believes that water bottles, for those of you spray bottles, they must have their own. Now, I know some clubs are even looking at having your own uh, recovery items like therabands, resistant bands, that each gymnast would bring their own and use their own rather than the shared community one within the club environment. That, that's pretty much it, Kitty. Just sanitise before yep. and after each rotation. No, that's fantastic, Rusty. Thank you. And I think you mentioned there, Dr. Cathy, and it's really important to note for everyone that, that Rusty has been in very close contact with Dr. Cathy. And as he mentioned at the start, that all the tips that we're given, we have we have put part Dr. Cathy, uh, our Chief Medical Officer, to make sure that they're, um, that they're medically appropriate uh, as well. So, Rusty, thank you very much. I know you put a hell of a lot of time into this in the last couple of weeks and we'll continue to do so. So thank you very much for joining us today. And as I said, we'll include those very great tips um, into our guidelines. So to someone who's been there and done that in the last week, um, Jade, NT clubs have been open for about a week now. I think there's three that have been open. I, I, I know you spoke to them this morning. So welcome, firstly, and thank you for joining us. And just wondering how your clubs have, have coped, what challenges have come up with week one of reopening, and is there anything that you know hasn't been mentioned today that, uh, that has happened once clubs actually reopen? Yeah, sure. Thanks, Kitty. Um, so we... Um, Restrictions were lifted on Friday. However, we had um, two clubs open on Monday and one open yesterday. Um, I guess the first thing I should say is that each of the states and territories, I think, are, are working quite differently. So what is a um, recommendation in the Northern Territory might not actually be a recommendation wherever you are. Um, <clears throat> so a couple of the things that... So Northern Territory Government, and I suggest um, any clubs go to your... Um, state body and filter written questions through to your um, association so they can be collated and you can be given written answers to them. Um, the Northern Territory Government um, approved for um, our clubs to have uh, a staggered start and finish time. So we have a two hour maximum time limit that someone can be in a gym. Um, so what we're doing rather than having a bottleneck of children is, um, so one group starts at three, one group starts at 3.15. And that group does not interact with any other groups. Um, and how most of the clubs are working it is that um, as each group goes around from station to station, the sanitising is done obviously on entering the gym and then between each section of the gym that they're in. <clears throat> um, and then obviously they leave at staggered times. Um, a couple of things that have been come up. Um, so they sanitise their hands and feet as they enter the gym. Um, doing... Sanitising a child's feet can be a little bit tricky. 
Um, so, you know, in one instance, they've got gymnasts sitting down on the floor and they get sprayed and then rub them together. Um, but it can actually be, so basically when you've got the kids going, one of the problems that has come up is that um, when you're spraying children multiple times with sanitizer, they end up with a buildup on their hands and feet. Um, and it can, if they're sweating through their hands and feet, it can actually get a bit slippery. Um, so that's one of the things that have, has come up over the last couple of days. Um, Big and down, we have an issue where kids arrive with no shoes on. Um, but they need to wear shoes to go to the toilet, so they want to wear each other's shoes. So um, that's something that obviously has to be managed. And given the gymnasts haven't seen each other for so long and they all love each other, that one of the biggest things is trying to keep them apart. So they all want to give each other a cuddle and they want to, you know, um, show the love. So that's also something that can, um, can be a little bit difficult to manage. So we do have um, sanitary stations, there's mops, there's um, spray bottles at each apparatus after each rotation. Um, no drinking from bubblers. Everyone has their own chalk. Um, they also have, some of them have their own sanitizers. Um, so no, obviously Northern Territory Government approved that our mechanism for the use of bars, beam, pommel, mushroom, vault, high bars cleaning is that of cleaning and sanitising the child, not necessarily the equipment, um, which has been, but that may not be the case in your state or territory, um, <clears throat> which, seems, which seems to be working well. Um, and obviously the, the big thing is common sense and communicating everything you do to your members. So whatever your COVID safety plan is, um, the big thing is that every member of your club knows exactly what measures you're taking and you communicate it out um, as best possible so yep. but all in that it's very exciting and it's all going well <laughs> yeah, that's great jade and and it's just fantastic to hear those real life examples and who would have thought there'd be 220 people on a call calling about kids rubbing their feet together and putting shoes on to go to a the toilet but here we are this is the world we live in and this is these are the you know great real life examples that um you know that are necessary that we need to do that to mitigate the risk so thank you very much jade for that i really appreciate appreciate your time um talking about time we've got two minutes left but um i think we'll, we went a few minutes over last time so if it's okay we'll I certainly want to hear from um from brenton teacher from northern districts in wa um brenton have you popped up somewhere Where yes you? i'm here kitty great. good actually there you are bottom right hand corner hello hello um, hello um thank you also for joining us just wondering from, from your perspective, what challenges looking to reopen are you facing and what are some of the, the insights that you can help us out with in, in preparing a club to reopen? Yeah, okay, I guess for us, um, getting clear information on what we actually need to do and what we need to comply with from a state government perspective has been a bit of a challenge for the last week. Um, the advice sort of kept changing all the way through the week. so. Um, you know, getting a lot of questions from coaches and, and staff and parents as well on, you know, will we be open this week? What, what are the requirements and things like that? So that's probably been one of our biggest challenges uh, over the last week. I guess getting, getting prepared to open isn't a huge concern because we've got a bit of time um, to get that done. So we've made the decision not to, not to open until next Monday. Um, and that's only going to be a very soft opening. So we've only got a few groups coming in, 20 people at a time. Um, I guess my concern going forwards is probably going to be more, how are we going to keep the, clean, the gym clean when we've got more people coming in more regularly? Um, you know, we're a club of a thousand kids, so I don't know how we're going to get all those kids through and keep up the, the cleaning regimes and the protocols. So that, that's certainly going to be a challenge for us. Yeah, I think that's a good point. It's it's not easy. I'm not saying it's easy, but cleaning with with ten people in at a time or twenty, as Jade was saying, with those staggered sessions is one thing. But uh, once we go back to full capacity, that's that's a completely different kettle of fish. And I think that goes back to what we've said all along that when we do reopen, it will not be business as usual. You know, and it will take months, maybe a year. I don't know to get back as business as usual. So I think we all need to to remember that. Brenton, we've heard a few. Um, from a few people from Rusty and from Jade also about the importance of, of communication and you just mentioned it there. So how are you going about educating your staff prior to the reopening on, on what the responsibilities are? Yeah, okay. 
Great question. Um, so we've taken a, a multifaceted approach to this. So we're requiring all of our staff to do the, the federal government's COVID-19 infection control training um, and sending their certificate through to us. Um, basically, lots of emails sharing the, the GA fact sheets um, and also the, the WA state government requirements. Uh, once we go back in, we'll have face-to-face -face meetings with those few coaches that will be coming in um, in the next few weeks uh, and having some training as to you know, how much cleaning they're gonna need to do and what needs to be cleaned. Uh, following on from that, we'll have a, just a cleaning checklist, I suppose, for those coaches that are in, just to, to give them a prompt and, and remind them of what, what needs to be done. Um, once we start having people coming back into the gym, I guess the main thing is we're just talking about it. We're talking about it a lot to each other, the, the customers, the coaches, the athletes. Um, you know, there's lots of signs that are gonna be up in the gym. Um, but yeah, just, just keeping the main thing the main thing, I guess. Um, and the main thing at the moment is, is hygiene and cleanliness and making sure that the environment's safe. You know, I've seen a lot of the um, US stuff they're talking about, you know, cleaning is more important than gymnastics at the moment. Um, and I think from a consumer confidence point of view, they're absolutely right. Um, if we can't convince that the uh, place is safe for the customers, then they're not gonna come back. So yeah, really communicating everything that we're doing um, and keeping cleaning front of mind. That's fantastic, Brett, and thank you very much. And I think you, you made a couple of very valid points there, the, the importance of communication and education of staff. And I'll just remind you all that this webinar will be placed on the website, um, probably tonight or tomorrow sometime. So I encourage you to, to share that with any of your staff who you think may benefit from listening um, as well, especially to all the tips that we've had. But the other one that you mentioned, Breton, was about the marketing. And I think that's something, and going back to my first mantra that I think I, I mentioned in our very first webinar of managing today to enable tomorrow. We're now moving into a stage potentially where our management of today is reopening and our enabling tomorrow is getting kids back into the gym and is getting our, our, our current members or our previous members and new members back in. And Brenton was spot on that if we as an industry and we as a sport can show, and I think we all are, our professionalism and level of um, research and, and credible guidelines and fact sheets that we're all adopting and utilising, and the great information that's coming from state and territories as well, that we can prove that we are a safe environment for parents to bring kids back in. I think that's going to be a really important part of our, our collective marketing as a sport um, to get kids back inside the gym. Thank you to all our guests. It was certainly chock-a-block today. There was a lot of information in there. We'll summarise it all in the guidelines. As I say, you can have a look at this webinar again at any time on the website and encourage you to share that with staff. Uh, there's so many tips and advice, I can't really summarise it, but at a very high level, the importance of personal hygiene, the importance of communication and education, the importance of regular cleaning and that differentiation between cleaning and disinfecting that Rus Rusty was saying. Um, uh, reiterate the national guidelines must be followed, but I think everybody has mentioned that first and foremost, as difficult as it is sometimes, to become familiar with what your state or territory regulations and requirements are and your state and territory associations can certainly provide you with that information and keep you in the loop in that space. Um, this health and safety theme is obviously an ongoing one. It is the most important thing. We will continue on this theme in the next couple of weeks um, and to, to keep providing you with as much information and resources and advice as we can to help you. And I think it's also been really helpful to learn from people who are going through the process. So Jade and, and Brenton, again, thank you very much. Um, that's probably all for this week. Um, almost finished on time, not quite. We rushed through it. There was a lot of information. Hopefully it was useful. Um, great to see you all and, and see you all next week. Stay safe. Bye-bye.